My name is Aiden Schreck, and my project is on the cultural context of honor-based revenge. Honor as a motive for revenge is a common theme in narrative. However, film and literature often portray honor-based retaliation as a purely emotional reaction and a violation of social norms, while ignoring the cultural and social aspects that influence retribution. In this presentation, I aim to illustrate how honor-based revenge varies by the culture and setting in which it transpires, and to use this more nuanced understanding to analyze revenge in narrative. To answer these questions, I have synthesized two works of cultural analysis and a short story. The article, Honor and Violence, An Account of Feuds, Duels, and Honor Killings by John Thrasher and Toby Hanfield, identifies two forms of honor-based vengeance. It describes different motivations for violence undertaken in the name of honor. We see an example of how both forms of revenge operate in John Steinbeck's short story, The Murder. To better understand revenge in this story, and in general, it is necessary to examine the cultural and social pressures that shape acts of retaliation. The article, The Two Faces of Revenge, Moral Responsibility, and the Culture of Honor, by Tamler Summers, describes revenge in two types of societies. Taking these three sources together provides a more thorough understanding of the relationship between honor and revenge. The first form of honor violence Thrasher and Hanfield identify is revenge-type honor violence, retaliation against an outgroup member who offends or attacks oneself or one's close associates. An outgroup member is an outsider, someone apart from one's family or social circle. Committing revenge-type honor violence maintains the Avenger's reputation in the eyes of close associates and outgroup members, establishing themselves as strong and worthy of respect. Fuse and vendettas exemplify this form of violence. Though Thrasher and Hanfield label one form of honor violence as revenge-type, both forms constitute acts of revenge. Purification honor violence diverges from revenge-type violence in that the perpetrator's target is an in-group member, often a relative or close associate. The in-group member has committed some transgression that dishonors the perpetrator or a group they both belong to. Part of the purpose of purification honor violence is to police the behavior of in-group members, warning others of consequences for deviating from a certain set of customs. One example of purification honor violence is honor killings, which often involve a man murdering a female relative perceived to have violated sexual norms. In both types of honor violence, deterrence is a major motivator. That said, Thrasher and Hanfield argue that honor norms are another, often overlooked motive. Honor norms may dictate that someone must take revenge for an insult or attack and can brand those who hesitate as weak and cowardly. Even when the costs of retaliation are high and someone is reluctant to engage in violent revenge, these norms force their hand. The potential loss of honor from avoiding revenge means some will retaliate not out of passionate rage, but out of fear of stigma. The author suggests that another function of honor violence is signaling, sending a message to others. Revenge type and purification honor violence signal that insults to one's honor will be punished. Many real world cases of purification violence are aimed at achieving attention from the broader community, rather than only in group members. For instance, honor killings send the message that a family will not tolerate deviations from sexual norms. Killing the disgraced relative distances the rest of the family from their actions and ensures that they are not implicated in that relative's behavior. Purification violence removes a stain on a group's honor, but since honor is dependent on respect from others, the outside community must bear witness to the punishment of the shameful individual for the group's honor to be restored. The complex link between honor and revenge is evident in John Steinbeck's short story, The Murder. Jim Moore lives on a ranch with his Eastern European wife, Jelka. Jelka is a quietly dutiful homemaker, obeying Jim's every wish. Jim comes to treat her as a pet, or as property. One evening, Jim finds Jelka having an affair with her cousin, and he fatally shoots him while he sleeps. The next day, a sheriff's deputy and a coroner arrive at the scene. They do not arrest Jim, who they expect to walk free. The deputy only warns Jim not to punish his wife excessively, to which he assents. On the contrary, Jim brutally beats Jelka. After this abuse, Jelka immediately returns to her role as the obedient housewife, 
dutifully preparing Jim's breakfast. The murder of Jelka's cousin more closely resembles revenge-type honor violence rather than purification. Unlike purification, revenge honor violence is carried out against an outgroup member. Although Jim is related through marriage to Jelka's cousin, they are not close, and Jim regards him with the rest of her family as foreign curiosities, making him an outgroup member. Jim's abuse of Jelka, meanwhile, better fits Thrasher and Hanfield's description of purification honor violence. As Jim's wife, Jelka is an in-group member, and his revenge serves to regulate her behavior, punishing and deterring infidelity. However, signaling, which is a key component of Thrasher and Hanfield's model, is notably absent from both acts of revenge. This absence can be explained by the article, The Two Phases of Revenge, Moral Responsibility, and the Culture of Honor by Tamler Summers, which describes revenge in two types of societies. In honor cultures, personal vengeance is a tolerated and even expected response to slights. Punishment by a third party is unsatisfying. In institutionalized cultures, where the state plays a larger role, personal revenge is frowned upon. Third-party punishment is the norm, and people are satisfied as long as the perpetrator is penalized sufficiently. The fact that retribution is relegated to the legal system means that personal vengeance contradicts established customs and becomes taboo. Steinbeck's story takes place within an institutionalized culture, in the U.S. presumably around when the story was published in 1933. Living in a culture where revenge is taboo and domestic violence is punished with jail time, Jim cannot make his revenge against Jelka public, preventing him from signaling. Although the institutionalized culture forces Jim to exact vengeance in private, he is not prevented from acting on honor. Nevertheless, his motives may go beyond what Thrasher and Hanfield's model describes. For instance, Jim may have thought that allowing the cousin to go unpunished would make him weak. This illustrates that in revenge honor violence that occurs in private, Avengers may seek to restore their own self-image rather than social standing. Another interpretation is that Jim was maintaining his social status, but only within his household, rather than the broader community. Jim perceives Jelka as his property, and by having an affair, she distances herself from his control, thereby weakening Jim's grip on his so-called property and lowering his status as the dominant member of the household. After retaliating, Jelka is more obedient, making her once again Jim's property and restoring his dominant status. Thus, Private honor-based revenge may be a way to restore social standing, but only within smaller groups. Narrative is the product of the culture in which it is produced and subsequently influences that culture. Therefore, Steinbeck's The Murder reflects common attitudes about revenge and helps fuel them. A revenge taboo which occurs in institutionalized cultures causes revenge to be perceived as a primal and emotional reaction, a response engaged in by those without regard for civilized behavior. Jim's behavior toward Jelka is that of a violent hypocrite. Through a cultural analysis of revenge, we see that revenge is a hallmark of societies based on honor, and is expected even of people hesitant to retaliate. Even in an institutionalized culture, revenge exists within the justice system, which, pro which provides retaliation in a regulated or orderly way. Ignoring the role of revenge in official channels, and the existence of avengers who retaliate only because of community expectations, furthers the notion of revenge as an impulse of emotionally disturbed outliers. Illuminating the social dynamics of retribution creates a more nuanced understanding. Overall, exploring how honor violence is perpetrated against outsiders and against in-group members illuminates the motives for honor-based vengeance. It shows that revenge is not merely about punishment, but also motivated by maintaining social standing, regulating others' behavior, and complying with social norms. Furthermore, Steinbeck's story adds to Thrasher and Hanfield's article by illustrating how honor violence differs when exacted privately instead of publicly, and when the cultural forces of an institutionalized society restrict the signaling mechanism of honor violence. By examining both the article and Steinbeck's story, we see that honor is a powerful motive for retribution across a multitude of cultures. That said, each individual instance of honor-based revenge depends on a given culture's perspective on revenge and the degree to which it emphasizes personal honor. I would like to extend my appreciation to Dr. C for mentoring me throughout this project, and thank you for listening.